in and it's like, you know, they, they have a good time with each other and it's like an experience. And if you take it, if you take that away from some of those students, you're isolating them. Um, I don't know, I just, I let just me clarify there. Experience. Yeah, but let me clarify, Denise. No one's, they're in it, it should. no one's taking anything away from anyone. That's not the idea. The idea is that certain students who have who are taking scholastic sports yeah. and they are already doing multiple hours a day in practice, say football, for example, all right? Is it only you know, athletics? Do they, they, they learn would, about health in the gym? They learn, you know, there's other... There are other um, things that they're, they're doing. It's not they just have drive, driver aid. They have it's not a just sports aid. They, 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 yes. Gym is gym. Gym. Gym isn't only no, gym. The gym. Gym is if you, if you, mm -hmm. I don't think you take that from. Yeah, maybe. What? Only in like Mr. Indian Hill. They're not all. We're not talking about Indian Hill. I'm talking high school. High okay. school. I'm talking, I'm talking high school. What about the programs that we offer? So we're talking about physical education. Yes. Um, and within physical education, New Jersey has a set of standards like they have for mathematics and, and language arts literacy and world languages. And so what we really need to look at is how our interscholastic sports supports I'll just make that a new word. How are interscholastic sports um, meeting those standards that are set by the state. So we'd have to really take a, a close look at that. And I understand what you're saying about like who would be left behind um, and what would that feel like. I mean, both my kids are in interscholastic sports and there's, you know, I mean, Matt's in high school now, so he doesn't, I don't think he's missing, I don't think he's doing too much, is what I'm saying, even though he tore his ACL. But. I, think it's, I think it's worthy of, of taking a look at. Yeah, I think one of the options, I think, to not maybe, I don't know if this is an option, is if they would have an option. To, like, if they, have a lot, if they have a game that day or they have a lot of practice, and they have a lot of homework, if there's a way that they could use gym as an opportunity to be exempt from gym that day because they're going to be traveling far that night and they're not going to get home too late, that there is this option possibly of going to a study hall or something to do something, okay. yeah. One of the reasons I'm saying this too is it's already been demonstrated by some of the some of the coaches have very strict attendance requirements. So from a from a coaching standpoint, I don't think kids are comfortable going to a coach and saying something like, I have a midterm tomorrow and I so I can't be at this practice or I can't make it to this game or anything like that. Once you're locked into a sport, that time commitment is pretty definitive. What is flexible is that hour or so that's been set aside that day in school that you're taking gym. The, the truth is we've got kids who are spending many, many more hours outside of gym in an, in an intergalactic sport. They are traveling out of district. They are sometimes getting home late and they're physically tired. So you factor all those things in, I think that having that flexibility as a student to know that that next day after having played in a football, well, football it's terrible this weekend, but playing in a baseball game, playing in a soccer game, playing in a lacrosse game, basketball, et cetera, that's taking place during the middle of the week, they got that flexibility <coughs> of, you know, maybe doing some study at a time when they would have been taking gym. And so that's, that's just the thinking. trainer that you're referring to in the high school that when do the kids have access to that so the plan is for the strength and conditioning coach I believe to work from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on uh, Monday through Friday so they would have access at the end of the day. Right. so if a kid wanted to do a workout they could take the late bus home after doing that workout Mike on your one comment on the, uh, the coaching handbook I think that's a good idea. I know, I know Shane's not still here, but I think uh, Bill, maybe for all the coaches, obviously sometimes, I guess some of those handbooks have been out there a long time. It would be nice to make sure like, hey, you know, have them sign something like, hey, we read this, we, re we reviewed it, because obviously we have a lot of coaches that are new. We also have a lot of coaches that have been here many, many years that, you know, like, oh yeah, that handbook, you know, just to refresh their memory, like, hey, these are some of the expectations that we have, you know, it's not all about winning and losing, it's about creating a culture and all those other things. So, you know, I would definitely think that's something, you know, we should make sure we look at. You know, on a yearly basis. We actually do look at that on a yeah. yearly basis. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> Regarding handbook, uh, Coach's handbook was rewritten not too long ago. I actually wrote it. Um, sorry, it didn't meet your standard. I'll be happy to go back and look at it again. <laughs> when we wrote it, we took input from all the coaches. Sh uh, Shane runs a fall, winter, and spring preseason coaches meetings where, among many things, the handbook is addressed. Uh, we also run a, a sort of short thing with the student athletes before the start of the season in terms of sportsmanship. Uh, we do expect through the individual teams that the parts that are reviewed are there. We did try and run a couple of years ago a generic night for all parents for all three seasons to come and explain the handbook and the concepts <coughs> and so forth. We kind of got away from that the last couple of years because, quite frankly, it was very poorly attended. Um, each of the coaches, in addition to their fall preseason meeting, is supposed to have an open parent meeting so they can explain the parts of the handbook that they, you know, rely that apply to them. But there's a lot of things that are there. We certainly do look at those things every year, but Shane and I will certainly look at it again through August and make sure that it's up to date. And we'll continue to do our preseason meetings uh, with the parents and students. I actually have spoken with Shane. We want to do more things like. Uh, do more things with NCAA uh, clearinghouse and guidelines and all of those things. So there are there is there are plans to expand all of that and extend the, and expose the knowledge that the parents need to to get. So Bill, and there's no intent to insult your uh, writing acumen, knowing from your past experience as a teacher here. And I do remember when we assigned that test. We spent two hours the first night going through all of the news. No, I remember. We I were... never spent one time on a 15 page document for two hours in open session. They've banned me from the curriculum instruction committee since then. Right, right. Um, <laughs> what I'm basically referring to, and I think you'll, you'll possibly agree with me on this, is the way the handbook is structured right now, it is very modular. Uh, there are the, the sections mm -hmm. are directed to specific audiences, but they don't flow in a way that I think okay. could. I mean, there's one of the things when we went through this exercise, if you remember correctly, uh, we it was a lot about repetition. We were finding a lot of things right. being we, repeated we over. I just I think we could probably go back through it again Absolutely. and continue and that streamlining process. And Dr. McGarry said all of our handbooks are reviewed and updated annually. And yeah, and absolutely. The coaches handbook, so we'll, we'll be sure to do that. Uh, just one other comment about the option two that you're discussing. Just so that we're clear, there is something called an option two, but it's very involved, as Dr. McGarry said, involved standards. That if, you, if you use an option two for something, you have to ensure that the thing that's replaced, that's replacing it, meets the same standards as the curriculum. If an option two were to be in place, it would not impact the health, the marking period of health. They'd still be required to take the freshman health, a marking period of um, driver's ed, a marking period of family living, a marking period of first aid. What wouldn't happen is what I, I'm hearing here, and I just want to make sure everybody's clear on this. An option is not on a day-to-day -day option. If you do an option two, you're assigned to study all in lieu of the PE, and I'm not sure we even go that route. Philosophically, I, I tend to agree with you. I was an all-state athlete myself in high school, and I took gym every single day. I think there's value in that. I think our new rotating schedule also gives students the opportunity to get a study hall. And for uh, many, not all, but a good number of our varsity athletes already have a study hall on their schedule. That would mean a second study hall in their schedule, which is good and bad, and it's a case by case basis. But the idea of, well, tomorrow I'm going to come in and not take gym because I got a big game where I was out late last night, it, you're kind of insulting the PE teachers who see their class just as important as saying, well, I'm not going to take math today, or I'm not going to take English today. So we have, to, we have to balance all of those things as well when we make decisions that are curricular and programmatic in nature. As Dr. McGarry said, it's a, it's, a, it's a topic worth looking into. But I don't want anybody to be misled that you could just arbitrarily decide, well, today I'm not taking gym. You know, when students are out late, for example, a couple of years ago, both our soccer teams played in St. Augustine. I put something out to the staff, let them know that these kids are getting back very late. When I know a group is out very late, we always tell the staff, keep that in mind as these kids come in. So we do try and address those things. The option two is much more formal, and if that's something we're exploring, it, it, it involves a lot of study before we just decide to do it, so thank you. You could also argue, I mean, other groups can argue, Mike, that, you know, if you're a violinist and you're practicing and it's, you're up late and doing, like any, any other art, sport, something, you know, you have to be really careful on how you just say it's athletes, you know, because there are other students that are doing things that aren't athletic, so. We don't want to minimize what they're doing either. 